Shigesato Atoi is a talented, hardworking Japanese businessman. But when night falls and he's all by himself, he would do what every other lonely man does play RPGs, namely the Dragon Quest series. And while playing such games, Atoy would often imagine scenarios for an RPG of his own creation, one free from the tired and overdone tropes of the genre. A game that takes place in modern America, where you play as an average kid who fights against aliens, highway signs, and hippies. Itoi brought his novel idea to legendary game designer Shigeru Miyamoto, but instead of you're hired, Atoy was met with a disappointing O. Oh. I see. Miyamoto knew that the game could only be a success if a toy put his full effort into its creation, and with his multiple other jobs, that just wasn't going to be possible. Itoi was so sad after being turned down by video game Jesus that he shed tears on the bullet train home. However, he wasn't about to give up on his dreams just yet, and so he lessened his workload, called up Nintendo, and was granted a full team to begin work on his game, which later became known as Mother. Our story follows a young boy named Niten as he journeys across. <sighs> Our story follows. A oh my God! Why are there so many random encounters in this game? Our story follows a young boy named Niten as he journeys across America on a quest to unlock his psychic powers and save the world from an invading alien race ran by the evil Gaigu. Er, Gig? Listen, it's pretty much Gygus, so I'm just gonna call him Gygus. Not long into his adventure, Natengus teleported to a dreamlike world called Magicant. Its ruler, Queen Mary, has lost her memory, and requests that Niten find all eight parts of the song that she has forgotten. Returning back to the real world, Niten allies himself with two other children and one adult who ends up getting, uh, removed from the story, and after a long journey, he manages to collect all eight melodies. Playing the full song to Queen Mary helps her to remember her past. Mary is actually Maria. Niten's great-great-grandmother, who along with her husband George, was abducted by aliens long ago for the purpose of nurturing a baby Gygus. Maria often sang the eight melodies to baby Gygus as she took care of the alien, almost like its mother. But George was not about that ET life and secretly studied the alien's technology, later escaping back to Earth with the knowledge of PSI. A century or so later, the fully grown Mewtwo looking Gygus is told to destroy the Earth to keep the power of PSI from being used against the aliens. Magicant turns out to actually be the physical representation of Maria's consciousness, as the land fades from existence with her task of teaching the ten the eight melodies finally complete. Our three protagonists trek up Mount Itoi for the final confrontation against Gygus. However, none of their attacks have any effect. None except for... singing. That's right, we're going full Disney. Listening to the eight melodies brings back conflicting memories within Gygus, and he's forced to retreat back to space, promising to one day return and have his revenge on Ninten. Credits play. Mother hit shelves in Japan and was an instant success, sparking an English localization team to begin work on the translation, which they renamed as Earthbound. Two words. It took until the year 1991 for the English version to be finished and ready for release. But with the SNES being the new hip console on the block, combined with the unpopularity of RPGs in the US, Nintendo deemed the game unprofitable and scrapped the English release completely. Unfortunately, not the last time this happens to the Mother franchise. On the bright side, Mother 2 was already in production for the SNES and released just a few years later on the SNES. Whoops. Even receiving an English release along with some pretty horrible fart-based advertisements under the new name Earthbound. One word. A couple decades after the events of the previous game, Gygus got over his mother complex and returned to destroy the Earth. Thankfully, one brave rhinoceros beetle managed to travel back in time to warn Ness, the young boy prophesies to destroy Gygus, and ask him to visit eight musical sanctuaries spread across the land to record their melodies and become one with the Earth to unlock his full psychic powers. Saying all that out loud, I realize it sounds kind of insane, but that's because it, it is. It's a mother game. So Ness travels all around the world, helping corrupt politicians, defeating cultists, and assembling a team of three other children that also look suspiciously similar to the protagonist of the last game. Well, except for... Pooh. Yes, his name is Pooh, don't laugh. And along the way, our party is constantly being stalked by Ness's next door neighbor, Porky, who is possibly being controlled by Gygus, or could just be an asshole. After collecting all eight melodies, Ness becomes one with the planet and unlocks his full psychic powers. Sensing his defeat, Gygus escapes to the past along with the Porkster to go hang out in a nice cozy intestine cave. After a while, Gygus amasses so much power that he explodes into some kind of Rorschach inkblot test. To reach Gygus in the past, Ness, Paula, 
Paula, Pooh, and Jeff transfer their souls into robots and travel back in time for the final battle. Once again, attacks have no effect on the all-powerful alien. Left with no better options, Paula is forced to pray the haters away. Her prayers reach their family, friends, and you! As everyone's combined prayer does enough friendship love damage to destroy Gagas once and for all. Porky rolls off to another era as Ness and friends return their souls back into their human flesh bodies. The end. Question mark? Mother 2 was well received in Japan, but its English counterpart, not so much. Due to its shitty advertising, pun intended, and its increase in cost due to being packaged with a thick player guide, the game ended up a commercial flop. In an interview, Miyamoto once said, We had high hopes for Earthbound in the US, but it didn't do so well. We even did a TV commercial thinking, hey, this thing could sell 3 million copies. How much did it sell? 75,000. Oof. Nevertheless, development began for Mother 3, and began, and began, and began again. Nine years and multiple console swaps later, Mother 3 finally released for the Game Boy Advanced. Now I know a lot of avid Mother fans are going to get mad at me for spoiling the plot to this game, so let me first say that Mother 3 is an amazing game and you should buy it and play it before watching this video. Oh wait, you can't, because it never released outside of Japan. Thanks, Nintendo. Twins Klaus and Lucas live with their mother Hinawa and cowboy father Flint in the peaceful village of Tazmili. But don't get used to it, because nothing good ever lasts in this game. Just north of town, the pig mask army, under the control of this asshole, yeah, he's back unfortunately, are experimenting on the wildlife and turning them into ungodly hybrid abominations. On the way back from visiting their grandfather, Klaus, Lucas, and their mother have a cheap random encounter with a mecha Drago, and Hinawa is forced to sacrifice herself for her children to escape. News of Hinawa's death reaches Flint, who goes crazy and attacks the villagers, leading to his imprisonment in the town jail. Klaus steals one of Flint's knives and pursues the Mecha Drago on a quest for revenge. Flint eventually breaks out of jail and searches for Klaus, but finds no trace of his son remaining. Distraught with grief, Flint disappears from town as he continues his search for Klaus, leaving Lucas all alone in an empty house with his dog Boney as the only family he has left. Yeah. If you were ever wondering why Lucas always looks so depressed in Smash Brothers, well, now you know. The story then shifts perspectives to apprentice thief Duster, who lives in Tasmili with his abusive father Wes. And yes, every dad is a deadbeat in this series. There's a reason it's called mother and not, like, uh, dadder. Or I guess father. Father would probably make more sense. The two sneak into a haunted castle on a mission to steal the fabled Egg of Light. It's here that they meet Kumatora, the least princessy princess of all video game princesses, and the three succeed in obtaining the egg before being flushed down the castle drain. Duster loses his memory and gets separated from the rest of the party. Not knowing what the egg is or the fact that it actually contains everyone's collective memories from their past lives and the lost history of their civilization, he decides to bury it underground and go join a rock band. Band. The story then switches perspectives once again to a monkey who is being forced to dance for a merchant who's selling TVs to the people of Tazmili. Three years later, Tazmili has gone full capitalism. Anyone who doesn't own a TV has lightning routinely struck on their house by the pigman and their thunder tower, as is the case with our young hero Lucas, who decides he's done with all that shit and takes his dog to the club, where Kumatora now works and Duster is playing a gig with his band. The three convince Duster to take off his wig and bring them to the egg's resting spot, where, after touching the egg, Duster is able to reclaim his lost memories. Oh yeah, I'm not sure if I made it clear or not, but Boney is a permanent party member that fights in battles just like everyone else, so don't let his dog-like appearance fool you. Afterwards, the party heads to the Thunder Tower and destroy it, leading to a brief encounter with the mysterious Masked Man. Ooh, who could it be? Leave your best guess in the comments below. Wait! It's backstory time. Remember the last two games? Yeah? While well, everyone died, the world ended and humanity's last survivors took a boat to the last safe place on Earth, a group of islands resting on the back of a giant dragon. To keep themselves from destroying the Earth again, they locked their memories away in the Egg of Light, and chose to live the humble Amish lifestyle. Eventually, the dragon got mad at everyone freeloading on his back, and so seven fabulous men called the Majipsies had to seal him away with the seven needles. Meanwhile, after flip-flopping through time, Porky arrived on these islands and heard the legend that 
whoever pulls the seven needles will unleash the dragon and either destroy the world or save it depending on the pureness of their heart. He brainwashes a bunch of people into becoming his soldiers and makes plans to assemble all the island's inhabitants into Newport City for one last party before Klaus, I mean the masked man, will pull the final needle and unleash the dragon, destroying the world. Lucas and the masked man race against each other to pull the most needles and have control over the dragon. The score is 3-3 and it's all tied up, with the final needle being hidden underneath New Pork City. As our heroes arrive on the scene, they're stopped by Porky, who has become an immortal man baby due to the effects of time travel. After his defeat, Porky locks himself away within his absolutely safe capsule, where he can never be harmed but in turn could also never leave. Billions of years from now, when the world has long since crumbled away, Porky will still be living out his eternal existence in the absolute safety of his capsule, floating around aimlessly in space. A poetic end, in some way. Our party continues onward to where the masked man is waiting to pull the final needle. Lucas, being equipped with the Franklin Badge, is the only one who can withstand his powerful lightning attacks, and so it becomes a one-on-one -on -one duel. Having already realized the masked man's identity, Lucas refuses to lay a hand on his brother, but the same can't be said for his opponent, who is still under Porky's control. Somehow, from beyond the grave, Hinawa's voice manages to reach the twins, as she pleads with Klaus to stop hurting his brother and to remember who he was. Klaus comes to his senses and removes his helmet, but after all he's been through, the grief, the anguish, it proves too much to bear, as he suddenly fires one last lightning bolt, reflecting it off Lucas and back to himself, dealing fatal damage. With his final words, Klaus promises Lucas that they will see each other again, as he passes on to the afterlife, where his mother is waiting for him. Right after experiencing just about the most traumatic thing a young boy can imagine, Lucas is left with no other option but to pull the final needle and pass his emotions onto the dragon. His feelings are received as the ground begins to shake. Earthquakes split the land as massive rocks rain down from the heavens, destroying the islands completely. The end. Yes, I said the end. This is actually the end. <laughs> There's an additional scene where it confirms that everyone ended up okay, but it's up to interpretation where, or more importantly, how they actually survived. Could be on a completely new island, or could be in heaven. It's never explained, so your guess is as good as mine. Well, it got pretty sad at the end there, huh? I should probably say something to lighten the mood. Uh, Ness and Lucas gone to Smash Brothers, that's good. Mother 1 finally released in English, 25 years later, also good. Mother 3 still hasn't released outside Japan, wait that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. Shit, uh, you know what, I'm just gonna end the video on this picture of Boney. Thank you for your time. If you enjoyed the video, then subscribe for more. If there's a game or series that you'd like to see me cover, then leave a comment telling me what it is, and I'll get to it when I can. Peace, I'm gonna go harass Reggie on Twitter until he gives us Mother 3. Joke, don't actually, don't actually do that, please. <laughs>